Rope flow is a method of skipping using rotation and ground pressure through the feet as a guiding principle. And for those reasons, I think it's a fun and potentially very helpful tool for hikers to improve their hiking efficiency, to reduce their chances of injury, to distribute the stress and load more evenly through the body, and to create small but important co-contractions through the muscles and create muscular coordination up through the knees, hips, rib cage, all the way to the hands. And so by using a slightly weighted rope and keeping the feet firmly connected to the ground, you can start to use gravity and momentum and the rope to softly guide your body into greater ranges of motion, particularly into rotation, into the rib cage, into the spine. So this is something I started doing maybe six months or so ago. I've got a lot of joy from it and having a pretty good grasp of the basics now, I'm starting to use it as a tool with my clients as it's very easy to see what part of the body is moving and what is not when I see them uh, doing rope float. And that itself is a really good first step to getting someone out of pain or potentially helping them solve an injury. You know, I watch them move and I see them and I see what's not moving and I ask myself what's not moving there and what would be different if that is moving. The next step then is just to get that part of the body moving and there's an infinite number of ways about going, uh, going about doing that. Is rope flow the best way to do that? No, probably not. People often just get confused and frustrated and they give up and um, rope flow doesn't really help with that. What it does help with is dangling the carrot. Yeah, it's a great motivator. If I can get someone really interested and really hooked on rope flow, then I can say, hey, that move that we're doing, we can really improve that a lot if we get a few reps of just isolating some of this rotation through the rib cage and through the spine. Uh, that will potentially help with shoulders and it may improve your rope flow or it will reduce your shoulder pain when you're climbing or doing push-ups or whatever. So once we have that uh, movement down, once we can smooth it out a little bit, rope flow can be a great way to help that pattern, to get that pattern into the brain so it sticks and you are much more likely to be able to keep that range of motion. Your brain will let you hang on to that range of motion so you don't have to stretch constantly in order to reclaim it. It's a, it's a nervous system thing. So that is a, a brief overview of why I really enjoy rope flow, why I've been integrating it a lot for myself, but also for my clients. Uh, I encourage you to go and check out some videos. I think it's a phenomenal tool to, uh, to use for practice, just for fun, to get you moving. I like to do five, 10 minutes a day, maybe pick up a, a new skill every now and then. And I have put together the basics in a series of videos and uh, I'll be releasing them over the next couple of weeks. And I would really encourage you just to, to get really, really good at these basic patterns, and particularly get really good at the first one. I know what it's like when you learn something new and you just want to get good at everything, but uh, really it comes down to those small details. So listen to those cues, get yourself a rope. I just use an old climbing rope that, uh, that, I, um, that I retired from my, from my rack. So uh, in this video, we'll teach you how to cut the length what knots to put in it, and uh, how to get started. Very good for people who overthink, because you can just practice not thinking and rather feeling and getting into a really nice smooth rhythm, feeling that flow, moving back and forth, combining all of these patterns and having a, a real good time with it. Okay, welcome to this beginner rope flow tutorial where we're going to go through the four basic patterns and a couple of things you need to know to get your own rope and start off. So I built this rope myself just from an old climbing rope. Cutting it to the right height is important. I like to keep it about, if I go through my foot, I want it to reach about my rib cage. And then I have a series of knots in the rope as well. So I have just an overhand knot at the end which is just a simple overhand. And then down here, a little bit lower, I have a figure of eight. Now, that is so that if someone else who is a little bit taller is going to use this rope, they can get a little bit more space. And if someone shorter was to use it, then I can put another loop down here, just an overhand knot to make it a little shorter. So I've done it with a climbing rope. I think probably a lot of you will have a climbing rope kicking around, but if you don't, you can probably just use any rope that has a, a good amount of bend in it. From there, the, the second thing that we need to understand is the grip. 
which is very important. We use an OK grip, meaning that we have the finger, the index finger and the thumb is in that OK sign. And we're going to grip, well, we're not going to grip, we're just going to hold the rope and it's, that's going to enable the rope to rotate. So a lot of people, when they first start, they, they grab the rope with their fists and they start trying to do it, which is fine. But at a certain point, that's going to limit your rotation. And we want to be able to rotate 360 degrees because everything in rope flow is about smooth, rhythmic rotation. So once you have your rope, you're going to start playing around with it a little bit. And probably the, the first thing to do is just get used to a really nice figure of eight pattern going overhand. That's probably going to be the most natural thing. So with overhand figure of eights, we are basically just dropping one wrist on top of the other. You'll see me crossing over, going wrist to wrist. And it's important just to relax and get into the rhythm. And so you're crossing one hand over the other and you're imagining one circle here or if you're looking from the front view one line here and then another line to your side or from the side view another circle to your side and really when we're doing these lateral patterns to the side we want to try and maintain or think about that that line there so following along, just get into your rhythm and then we can start talking about what the feet are doing. A lot of the time because we're crossing over the body and we're creating that line left and right, we don't want the feet and, and the shoulders to interrupt. So if, you're, if your stance is too wide, you're going to be hitting your legs. So a lot of the time what's going to be useful is being in this split stance where we have one foot forward and one foot back. And if you want to get the most out of rope flow, you use just this slight internal rotation on both feet. So we're setting up in the split stance and my foot is just internally rotated a little bit, my front foot, and my back foot is just internally rotated just slightly. And that's going to help us generate torque and rotation as we rock back and forth, loading the front foot and the back foot. So once you've got used to your overhand figure of eight pattern, what I think then is the next cool fun move to learn is to switch that and you will automatically switch into an underhand figure of eight. So what we're gonna do is we're going to follow the momentum, follow the rhythm of the rope as we come round to the side, the rope is going to want to pull us in this direction to the left. And then all we're going to do is follow the rope and twist. Now I'm in underhand figure of eights. So I'll, sh I'll show that from the front, starting with underhand. And you can start your pattern with underhand as well. See how this is different? See how I'm kind of scooping up? So that would be underhand. and this would be overhand. So I'm pulling the rope over my hand, whereas in underhand, I'm scooping the rope under the hand. See, we're kind of in, in supination there as we pull the rope up. And overhand, we're kind of pulling the rope down to the floor, pushing the rope down to the floor rather. So that's our overhand figure eight. Spin and twist into underhand figure of eight. Overhand figure of eight. Spin into underhand figure of eight. So they are the two basic patterns that we can use to link some more fancy stuff later. But I think it's very useful to get very comfortable and very used to the the foundational things here of that split stance, remembering the okay grip. And then you can be really creative about how you transition from overhand to underhand. You can switch from left to right as I did there. 
So let's practice switching from overhand to underhand. So we'll start with our overhand figure of eights, crossing the wrist over. And everything in rope flow is about this figure of eight pattern and this rotation and this spiral. So I want you to get really comfortable here. Start to, when you're in overhand, you kind of think about throwing punches or throwing elbows. So we start to get a lot of movement through the rib cage, a lot of movement through the shoulder. Now we can switch into overhand and twist. I did a little double there just to make it a little, give me a little bit of extra time to turn around. Back into overhand figure of eights. And try your switch again. This time I went straight from my right side to my left side. Underhand figure of eight. And we'll switch into overhand figure of eight. Throw those elbows, rotate through the torso. Right to left, now I'm in underhand. Now I'm back in overhand. So getting really good at just folding the wrist on top of the wrist. Good to do this in the mirror or film it to see how kind of straight these lines are. Trying to create that circle on the right, circle on the left. And I think with rope, for, rope flow, the more you think about it, the harder it is. I want you to follow where the rope is guiding you, feel very connected to the rope, feel very, very much in that rhythm. The brain loves rhythm. And the beautiful thing about this is that it will self-organize your body. You'll learn faster. You will learn how to evenly and smoothly rotate and coordinate the body. So, so far I've always been turning to, the, uh, turning to my left. So I want you to also practice turning to the right. So we'll start in overhand grip, overhand figure of eight, and then we're going to turn to the right. We don't want to end up like Zoolander only being able to turn to one side. We want to practice both. That was a bit messy. So to organize the turn really well, I think it's best to have the front foot forward being the side that you are not turning to. So you're going to turn towards your back side. So we'll set up with left foot forward, right foot back. We'll be in overhand. So if we're in overhand figure of eights, left foot forward, I'm going to be more organized to turn to my right. So as we feel the momentum of the rope pulling us back, we're going to follow that momentum, bring it to the shoulder, and then trying to get a nice clean sweep on that other side. So I want you to practice these two basic movements, the underhand figure of eight and the overhand figure of eight. And I want you to get so good at them and so good at switching from side to side. So adding that twist and switching between underhand and overhand, I want you to get really good at that first before we move on to the next pattern.